Hi, thanks for tuning in. Seed is away this week. My name is Pete and today with me is Ariel who's a new beekeeper. And we've got a couple of single brood boxes that we need to go through and see how they're doing. They were splits that were done at the start of spring and we want to basically see their population and whether we need to super them or not. So we're just going to do a full brood inspection on a couple of these single brood boxes. And um, Ariel's going to jump in and do it. Have you done much beekeeping, Ariel? Only a couple of days with you, that's about it. Cool. <laughs> it's very fresh. Excellent. So I was looking at the bees flying in here and I'm seeing a lot of pollen on their legs. It's a really good sign that they're um, working well and they're raising brood because they ferment that pollen and feed it to the brood as bee bread. So we'll just give a little bit of smoke in the entrance. Take the roof off. Yeah, you might want to get your hive tool and pry it up because the bees stick it on really well. They do, it's quite tight. And just really gently peel it up. So straight away we can see the populations looking really good here. And if I look down, even without pulling frames out, you can see the bees have actually drawn all that comb out, these brand new frames here. You can see these older frames from the splits. So straight away, we can really sort of get a sense that this box is quite full. So we'll look for the queen on here, just because it's a single box, it's got no queen excluder and no super, so she could be on the top somewhere, but I can't see her anywhere. So we can just set this down aside Lean it up against the hive somewhere, close to the entrance maybe, and they can crawl back in if they want to. Now Ariel, do you want to just get your hive tool mm -hmm. and you're going to get the J end of it. Mm -hmm. And there's a little hole down in between the frames and the frame rest of the box. And just put your J tool down there and pry back. I better get my hood on too. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> these, They're feisty. <laughs> these bees are quite gentle. So really slowly. Would you grab pull that, that out for me? Sure. <laughs> so the reason to do it slowly is because there's bees back to back one on one side of each frame and they can get rolled against each other as you pull it out quickly and they really don't like that. They get really, really annoyed by that. Woo. Maybe too quick at the end there. No, no, it's okay. So what happened there is they'd cross comb that together. So they'd built comb oh, sure. across and joined it to the other frame. So we've pulled that out. Now we'll let the bees clean up that spilt honey because mm. they don't like open honey in their hive. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Or the other thing we can do is just um, cut that out and, um, and eat it. But we can see this is just a honey frame. So they're obviously bringing in some new nectar here. Yeah, wow. You see that shiny nectar? Uh -huh. So that means that's coming in right now. So they're onto something, they're working something, which is a really great sign. Mm. So we'll just put that aside. Same as the inner cover, we can just, I usually just put it on its end. The bees are fine. Lean it up against the hive, maybe around this side so it's out of our way. That is so much honey, that's wild. And these bees will clean up that honey as we go through the hive. <laughs> Are we grabbing the next? Yep. All right. So once you've got a little bit of space <laughs> mm -hmm. in your hive, instead of using your J, you still can if you want. Mm -hmm. But you can take this little kick down part of your tool here and mm. use it as a lever to go and pry them apart mm, nice. like that. So then mm -hmm. you can get your fingers straight onto yeah, those end bars. Absolutely. That's looking really great. So here we can see 
lots of cells that may be empty, but we might want to look for eggs down in there. And I can see a brand new bee here that's just come out. As you can see it's really fluffy and it's just wandering around a little bit. So what we'll do is if you look for your shadow mm -hmm. on the ground, so yeah. it's over there, so mm -hmm. you want to face your shadow yes. and then the sun will be over your shoulder mm -hmm. and then you can get the sun down into the cells mm -hmm. and that's how you want to try and find the eggs. Sure. You can also just try and manipulate the frame a little bit until the sun goes into the cell. Sure. There oh, we go. Is that some eggs down at the bottom there? Down here, yeah. Is it that white kind of looking for a juicy really little thing? These are all hatched out eggs. They turn into little larvae grubs. Mm. And down in here, you can see tiny, tiny, tiny little grains of rice. Yeah. So it's really quite hard to see normally, but when you get the sun down over your shoulder into the cell, then they generally appear. And we want to look for those because we want to make sure there's a laying queen in there. Mm. We also want to look for the pattern that she's laying in, whether she's laying in every single cell mm. or whether she's skipping cells. Because so quite, quite a lot of eggs, no? Quite a lot of larvae? Yeah, yep. So the queen can actually, when she's in full swing, can lay 2,000 eggs a day, they say. Whoa. So it's a lot. <laughs> and so up here we've got capped honey. So this is honey that the bees have stored away. Mm. And so you've generally got this half moon shape of brood and mm. then filled in the top is the honey and, and some pollen. Yeah, I see that. So that's looking really good. So now to check the other side, because mm -hmm. you want to keep these in plane with gravity pretty much. Mm -hmm. So if you flip it on its end like a kind mm -hmm. of like a door mm -hmm. and then spin it around its axis. Perfect. Now you can see the other side, you can hold it upside down if you want. Mm -hmm. So we can see a lot of pollen in here, maybe turn around to you. All this lovely coloured pollen mm. up in here. So lots of different colours, which is really great because it means that the bees are working different flowers which are giving them different types of nutrition. Mm. And we do want to see that bees, like just like us, need a varied diet mm. to stay healthy. So that frame looks really, really good. So we can just put it back in. And do you want to try yeah, and do the, um, do the hive tool? There you go. So I can just get these guys out of the way. Mm -hmm. Here's a little cool little thing. These are the bees ready to sort of, they're kind of guarding. You can see they stick their heads out oh, and they're wow. just kind of watching. Some are just eating honey, but yeah. some are guarding <laughs> all these ones. So if they're you- They're if you, guarding from us? They're, oh. Yeah, they're just looking. <laughs> So if you've got a feisty hive, that's what those guys are doing. These, mm. these guys are quite gentle, but if you can just give them a little smoke, mm -hmm. you'll drive them down. You can also use the smoke to move them out of the way. Hey Pete, was this the box you were inspecting? Was this, sorry, a couple of people missed the start of it. Was this a swarm or was this a split? This is a split that we made at the start of spring. Um, for the people that just joined, these frames here, you can see are a, a little different, darker colour to these three frames. Mm. And so these frames are the old split frames from a different hive and, and these new ones the bees have filled out. We're just looking to see how um, good the population is and how well these bees are doing and if they need a super. And it looks to me like they do, just from what we're seeing on top and on the frames so far. Are we looking for the queens? Yeah, we always want to look for the queen. So just turn around to see your shadow there on That's right. the ground. That's it. Perfect. What are you seeing there? Um, lots of brood, no? Cat yeah, brood. that's right. Lots of cat brood. And is it um, just worker brood? Because it's not... Yep. So that's all worker brood. You see the flat, I'll just touch the bees to yeah. move them out of the way really gently. See the flat capping. Yeah. Down here you can see these Love it. convex cappings mm. and larger cell size, mm. which means these are drone bees. So mm -hmm. there's a drone just there. Mm -hmm. And so those are the drone larvae. Wow. So the bees will just draw out 
whatever cell size they need at the time, but then they're kind of stuck with it. <laughs> the beekeepers can control that by using wax foundation and giving them the start of the cell size that the beekeeper wants. So, but that's a really fantastic pattern that we're seeing in brood. It's like completely chock-a-block. Yeah, it is, isn't so it? So that, that really tells us that this hive, the population is going to really boom quite mm. soon. So they're going to need more space. Sure. So do you want to have a quick look at the other side? Yeah. And that's the same thing again. It's a fantastic pattern. Yeah, very. There's lots of cat brood. So that's great, so we can put that back and it's all looking healthy. One thing I should say too is you really want to look at the capping for any, um, any flaws in the capping because that can be some, a sign of disease sometimes. What might a flaw look like? Just a, a hole or um, some tears around the edges. Mm. So you're generally looking for, for a hole in the middle or some pinholes around the edges. Oh sure. And Around the individual cells? Yep. Okay, sure. And if you see something a bit funky, then you want to inspect it, peel it away with your hive tool or a little mm. stick or something. And generally, if you see a white larvae, generally, yeah. it's okay. But if you see a dis discoloured, something discoloured, then you might want to have a closer look. Um, put your questions and comments down below and um, we'll get to them and answer them. Pete, someone's mentioned Vanessa saying, gosh, you sound like your brother. Now, I don't know if you know Vanessa or whether she's from another mother. I don't actually have a brother. <laughs> Pete, can you have two supers on the flow hive setup? You absolutely can, yeah. Um, so you might just want to make sure that the bees are going to be strong enough to police all that space and also that there's a strong flow happening for them to be able to fill all that space for you. But yeah, you can definitely have as many supers as you like, depending on what's happening with the flow. You can also have as many brood boxes as you, as you like. Some people run one, some people run two. Um, it just depends on your honey flow in your area and the size of, of your colony that you want to, to try and manage. Um, obviously more boxes means more bees, mm -hmm. and so more management, more lifting, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so space management is quite important with bees. Is there a best way to go? Like, do you think it's best to have two brood boxes and a super or? Yeah, it's good. Up to the individual to figure out what they want to do. Sure. We've got a little cross comb here. We do, don't we? Yeah. So we've got, we've got the bees building an extra little, little bit yeah. over the edge here. Would so we want to get rid of that so it doesn't? Well, I would because yeah. some beekeepers wouldn't. But I, I would because it's um, so we can just keep that in a container and save, save all these bits up and melt them down later on. I'll just um, shake these guys off. So it's coming, um, is that just kind of a natural pattern of the comb or it's coming out quite... Um, Over here? Yeah. Hives of bees just sort of build comb differently. It's quite sure. weird. And all this coloured pollen, is that just pollen in the edges there? Pollen in here, okay. brood and the honey of mm. pollen sure. in a little strip. Mm. It is really like a moon almost, isn't it? If you think of the brood box as these frames as slices. More brood. No queen yet. <laughs> yeah, we might have missed her <laughs> getting distracted talking. Oh, yeah. But we've seen eggs, so that's a really great indication. So eggs hatch out on day, well, day three, as of three days ago. Nice. Just a question, Big Cheese was saying his hive swarmed about a mist and is starving. Could we connect... The way to do that is what's called a newspaper combine. So you will move one of them. Um, generally, I guess you'd move the weaker one onto the top of the stronger one, but you put a newspaper, sheet of newspaper in between, and with your hive tool, you cut slits in it. Paper away. And what that does is it acts as a slow release to get the bees used to each other's smell. So 
Um, by the time they've chewed the newspaper away over a couple of days, then they're used to each other and they won't sort of fight. Wow. Um, I've had plenty of success with that. I've also combined colonies just by whacking them on top of each other and, they, and just letting them work it out and it seems to be fine. So, um, but you know, don't quote me on that. <laughs> the you newspa- didn't hear it on YouTube. The, yeah, the newspaper combine is a really great way of combining those colonies. The other thing you could do if you do want two colonies is to give the wheat colony eggs. So just give them a frame with some eggs on it um, from the strong colony and your weaker colony should hopefully then draw queen cells from those eggs. So I'll get that one out. And Ariel's doing really great at being really slow and gentle and super calm, which is really cool. Don't want to piss these guys off. That's right. <laughs> so once again, we're seeing lots of great brood around here. Lots of a nice, a nice tight pattern, lots of pollen in here. Generally, plenty of food in this hive. Lots of bees. Um, so a little bit of strange capping here. So you just want to invest, thanks for holding the frame by the way. A little bit of strange capping, just want to investigate with your hive tool. And I can just see a white grub beneath looks, doesn't look sick. So it's always worth having a little look. look what at, did you spot there Pete that made you go in on that one? The, um, the capping of the cell is just not complete, had a hole in it. Ah. Here's another little one with a pinhole. Let's get that bee out of the way. Looks fine. Nice one. Callum's behind the camera doing a great job as usual. Doing an amazing job. <laughs> so this is looking really great. So we can probably put this back in, I guess. Did you have a look for the queen? I did. No queen. No queen. <laughs> This is a good question, um, um, Pete, from Sue. And I think it's a question that a lot of beekeepers, I know myself and Ariel, we both work in customer support. I get it quite a bit. Um, Ariel probably does as well. With the split, is it something that just keeps going on and on and on and keeps going over and over and making new hives? Or does a hive stabilise and no split is needed? Or is it just like the never-ending split? It can be that way of a never-ending split. It really depends on your seasons, where you are and your climate and what's flowering um, at the time. So every season, if you have a bumper hive, you might find that you just need to keep splitting your hive. Um, which of course is great for the bees and beekeepers because you can then give those bees away or sell them off or have more and more and more hives. Um, but sometimes, you know, sometimes hives go down. Um, they they die off, they get weak, they go queenless. So um, when you have multiple hives, it generally can stable, you kind of can stabilize them, um, just depending on how cold your winter is, things like that. So hives can go down in, in a cold winter. So um, cold weather beekeepers talk about winter losses and just managing that and living with that and then propagating from there surviving colonies so um, yeah it just generally depends on what's going on in your climate but splitting is a really great way to um, mitigate the swarming tendency in the bees and so if you wanted to split do you just pull out half the frames or and put it in another box or is it more complicated basically yeah that's basically it if, as long as, if you don't find the queen, as long as you don't mind where she ends up, mm. if you put half the frames in another box, you just mm. want to make sure there's eggs in both boxes. Mm. Wherever sure. the queen doesn't end up, the bees will draw a queen cell or several mm. queen cells. And you might be able to tell because you'll see the larvae and then... That's right, yeah. exactly. If you go, go back in in four or five days after the eggs have hatched, the initial eggs have hatched, you'll Ooh. be able to see where the queen isn't and Ooh. where she is Great. without finding her. Mm. As long as you can see eggs. What are you seeing in this frame? Well, is that a lot of pollen? Yeah. yeah. 
Is that quite strange for this side of the hive or it's almost in the middle or? No, not really. Yeah, sure. Um, and honey. Gen honey and yeah, heaps and heaps of pollen. Just yeah. means they've got, they're bringing so much pollen in yeah. and storing it away. Fun to eat. <laughs> Generally they put their brood in the middle of the, of the colony but bees never follow the rules. Mm, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got some capped, um, is that just worker brood? Yep. Yeah. So we might, um, we might have a quick look at that side just to yeah. see if the queens might be there or whether we've missed her or chased her across the box. I can't see her. <laughs> Any more questions, Trace? Yeah, look, and we've just had um, someone on YouTube just sort of saying our feed's a little bit, um, keeps freezing a bit, but hopefully I think we're, we're doing okay. It's looking all right for you, Cameron. I think it is in and out. We are, if you knew where we were, um, we're sort of down a bit of a hill in the bee um, apiary, so um, I think it's okay. Oh, there we go. Callum's giving you a good shot of where we are, so it's amazing where you can even hear us sometimes, I think. Thanks it's a pretty so. hard place to work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get this view. Yeah, it's it. hard to look in beehives when yeah. you've got a view like that. <laughs> when, you, when you've got all that out there going on. It's a pretty hot day here today, too. It is. Um, yeah, Pete. So one of the questions, Tara was saying, what's the best way to feed bees? They have, uh, she's got one brood box and it's only new, but it's cloudy and rainy conditions at the moment. So mm. this one wanting, not quite sure where they are, probably Victoria or somewhere. Yep. Um, there's, there's a few ways to do it. One really good way, um, Cedar's posted quite a few videos on feeding bees. If you look back in the YouTube feed, um, where he makes a, a jar feeder, which is just a, jar, bigger size as you like, generally like a two litre jar is really great, punches little tiny holes in the lid just with a pin nail, maybe three or four, sometimes more depending on how quickly you want them fed. Um, you fill that with sugar water, generally one to one sugar to water, so one kilo of sugar equals one litre of water, and then you fill the jar, upend it and it'll rain out for a second and then it'll get a vapor lock kind of thing going on and you put it over the top of your hive and that's what this hole is for if you upend your jar over the top of your inner cover with the holes in the jar lid over that hole and that'll just slowly drip sugar water the bees will go up and collect it and then just keep checking them every day or a couple of days and keep really refilling your jar until they stop taking it and they get onto a nectar flow, or until they bulk out to your satisfaction, I suppose. It's um, always tricky when it rains. The bees don't generally get as much food from the flowers. I think um, our feed's got a bit better now, so. Excellent. So everything, I think we're back on again. So you can see lots of drones here hanging on the outside of the hive. This is the second frame to the outside of the box. Lots and lots of drones, and they generally just hang on the outside. They're ready to fly out um, fairly soon, I'd say, to go to their drone congregation area in midair and look for a queen to mate with. And if they don't find a queen, they'll come back and do it all again tomorrow. And if they do mate and successfully spread their genes, then unfortunately they die. Oh, so it's a, little, it's a little bit brutal for the drones. At least they don't have to do much work in terms of collecting food. So drones just exist to mate and that's their Well, role? as far as humans know. Yeah, sure. But, you know. Who knows what else is They're going on? There for moral support. Moral support. <laughs> <laughs> so what have we got on that side, Ariel? Oh yeah. Sorry. No, no, not at all. There we go. We've got lots of capped honey and more pollen. More as well. pollen. So so much stores in this hive. It's fantastic. Yeah, lots of food. Great. All right. Nice. Quickly have a look at the last frame. It's probably just honey. Hey, um, if you've if you're, you've inspected this, but it didn't have a super on, Sue's asking um, if there was a super on it. Do you just take it off and put it down, and then check the brood? Do you just yeah. lift the whole box off? Absolutely, yeah. 
and when there's a full super, trying to lift it can be pretty tricky, so I do recommend getting help um, to do that. You can rest your super on your inner cover on the ground. Put your inner cover down, put your super on top, just so the bees don't get squashed, or you can put the super on its end on the ground too, if you want to do that. So you can right. see that comb's really new. Mm. It's got that lovely, yeah, golden color and it's getting filled with really brand new nectar, which they're bringing in right now, obviously. Um, once that nectar's capped, then it'll be stored. But um, it's not quite honey yet, not quite ready. I can't see the queen there. Mm, over here. We must have missed her. But that's okay, we know she's there and we know that this box really needs a super. So we'll do that and put that back in. Hopefully these guys have eaten up this little um, tear out here. Just put it this way or oh, yeah, in there because sure. we'll put this one back Got where it, it was in the, in the side there. So this is a bit hard to do when it's all sticky. It's tr tricky to do without squashing bees. So, um, they're still trying to clean it up. I guess the other thing we can do is just cut it out. Oh, I've got a bee trying to sting me. <laughs> You can see she's, oh, she was trying to get under my suit. <laughs> they get a little bit, um, they get a vibration to them when they're trying to sting. They, I think they try and hang on to you with their um, mandibles or something, I'm not sure. But we can eat that later, it's got a little bit of pollen in it. And just maybe push that together. They'll probably just, hopefully they'll wax that up. So you can just kind of push it. The bees will clean all that up and get it back to normal. And then to push all these over, oh yeah, you got a trick. just use the hive tool as a lever. So go slide down the side, keeping contact so you don't kill bees and then just wiggle it so there's no bees underneath mm. and lever it across. Oh. Oops. I'm just wiggling this to get them out of the way. Okay, this, now. But this is an eight frame brood box um, and sometimes like the gap um, that you've got on either side, it looks like you could almost fit another frame. Can you do that or is, it, is there not enough space and it's the wrong bee gap? There? It, yeah, there's not quite enough space in there, um, unfortunately. This, these frames, these Langstroth frames are designed with what's called bee space in mind. And you can see here, these, there's two bees back to back in that gap and that's the exact space that facilitates that. So um, that space is quite important. If the space is larger like that, the bees will definitely fill it with, um, with wax. So they'll comb across it, they'll bridge it across. And if it's sort of smaller, then they usually sort of fill it with propolis. So it's a good idea to sort of keep that gap good and then keep your frames in the middle. So sometimes, because that gap between the frame and the wall is quite large. Sometimes the bees will connect their wax to the wall. And so then you've got to clean it up with your hard tool. So instead of putting the inner cover straight on that, we'll get the queen excluder. Ariel, do you mind grabbing that yes. queen excluder down there? And basically what we're doing is doubling the bees space. So this, if the bees are a little too weak, which they're not, but if you were to super a weaker hive, 
it's kind of a critical point for them because they then have to police double the space with without sort of enough numbers to do that but because we've got so much brood that's going to be emerging in the next week or so I think we can definitely super it up. Go for it? Yeah, go for it. Slowly? Yep. Just see see what's underneath. It's really, really hard to do this without killing bees, unfortunately, but we do our best. They kept it a bit clear. That's pretty good. The little one that just came through it. <laughs> and then um got the flow frames already in the super. You can obviously put your box on first if you want to and then put your frames in. But we'll put our flow frames in beforehand. What you do want to make sure of is if you're putting a new super on that your frames are all aligned. You can see these, this one's kind of kicked back. It's got a little space there where the bees could get out. And that's just because it's sitting back or it's actually sitting towards the front of the hive more. So we want it all just to be flush. And the other thing is that you need to do you just had to go grab a key. So grab your flow key. It's in a new frames, sometimes in transit, the parts of the flow frame can move a little bit. You want to just make sure they're set in the correct position. So you want to go into the top slot. So there's two slots in the top slot and just turn your key and make sure all those cell lines are set correctly. And then the bees will fill them. If they're not set, then the bees won't be able to do anything with them. And now it's a bit of a waiting game for the bees, for you as the beekeeper, for the bees to get up there and start putting honey in. And that can take a couple of days or it can take a whole season. So it, it can be really rewarding quickly or you may just have to be really patient. And it's just, unfortunately, it's a really local thing depending on what's going on in your area and what's, what the strength of your hive is like. And it's so good to say that, Pete, because that, that is such a, I mean, let's face it, we all want to put that on and we want honey really I'll quickly. Um, and it's a question always being asked, how quick, and, and as you say, it is, there's so many other factors, aren't there? Not just the bees or the climate or the colony or... That's right. I don't know. And actually, before we, before we put the inner cover on... Can you take this off? Yeah. yeah. And, what we'll do is, because we've already sort of closed the hive a little bit, we'll just shake these guys off. We can bump them off like that. It's kind of the only time you don't want to be slow and gentle. But a way that you can encourage the bees to get upstairs into the super is getting some of this burr comb or brace comb. You can get it off the top of your brood frames as well, generally. And jamming it into the flow frames. You just get a bit and just jam it in. And the bees will come upstairs and they'll go, hey, that's not meant to be there. And that'll get them up there and starting to work. And once they've started to work, they generally keep working. Oh, that's so good, Pete. So you're just going to do it on the one frame, or...? No, I'll do it on a couple. Uh -huh. Do it on the middle ones, so that the bees go straight up into the middle. Obviously, if you've got plenty of wax, then do it on all of them. So you're literally just push, pushing it into those frames, because I know we've had some people say they, they paint it on as well. It's a similar kind of thing, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, that's a great idea. It just um, makes the frames smell really good to the bees and um, they want to get to work. This one in particular, they, they see that and they want to move it out of the way because they don't like 
it being so untidy, I think. That's great. So that's a good little bit of encouragement to get the bees great starting job. on your flow frames. Do you want to put the inner cover on, Ariel? Oh, someone thought they spotted the queen on the edge, but I missed that question. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh. You missed her. We missed her, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we all missed her. Definitely. That's okay, though. Let's put this plug in. It's a little bit tight. It's a bit waxed. And put the roof on. All right. Hey, Pete, you know last week Simon's asking um, if you caught Hello, last everyone. week's one, it was about Fruini and she was uh, marking a queen. Simon's just wondering how long do those markings last on a queen? Um, it sort of depends what colour. I've seen white markings last forever. I've seen blue markings get chewed off by the bees oh. and, and red markings get either chewed off or worn off. Um, so sometimes they last forever and sometimes they last for a couple of years. But um, you know, you can always remark obviously. Um, and marking's great because it keeps track of your queen in the hive. If you've marked your queen and you know she's marked, and then all of a sudden you find an unmarked queen, you know, oh she's new. And so something's happened there. Um, but also she's just a lot easier to find. Yeah, definitely. Are there um, any other questions, Trace? Yeah, Naomi's asking, how far away would the drone congregation be? Where do those fellas go and hang out? That's a good question, and that's something I don't actually know, the, the, um, the length that they travel. But I do know that it's um, fairly far. I think it's a couple of kilometres, but I'm, I could be wrong. Um, all the drones in the hives in this area, so other beekeepers' hives as well, will all um, congregate in the same area in midair and fly around in the circle looking for a queen. And we don't know how they know where to go, but the drone congregation areas are usually the same places. And so scientists have been studying those areas and trying to, fig try to figure out um, what makes them the places to go. But um, as far as I know, we still don't know why. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Good view or cold, cold beer. Cold on beer. Tap. Yeah. I don't know. Stone and Wood might have a brewery up there. Or something. <laughs> honey beer. Yeah, honey beer. Yeah. Mead. Honey beer. They might be making mead or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, you know how like this is the Flow Hive Two Plus, and we have the Flow Hive Two with the inner cover, and it's got a plug in it. Mm -hmm. And this is a pretty common question because people who buy the Classic Hive, of course, don't get that plug That's in the right. inner cover, and they sometimes think we've forgotten to put it in. Um, but we're being asked, can you just leave that plug out in summer and kind of why did we put the plug in the latest ones and it wasn't in the early ones? Um, you can leave the plug out in summer. What, what generally can happen is, I know, I'm not sure of the reason why it, it got put in the, the second edition, but I think this might be the case, is when the bees get really packed and really busy and they've, they're running out of room, they come up through this hole and they build castles in here and they build honeycomb in here. And if you, um, if you just let that happen, it can be really, really overwhelming. <laughs> it can be like massive amounts of honeycomb. And when you lift your roof up, it all kind of pulls apart and there's a huge mess covered with bees and sticky bees and honey. And, um, it's, it's really great to have so much honeycomb for your kids, I guess, but it's a lot to deal with. And I think the plug was meant to be a way just to um, manage that if you want to. You can let them up or keep them inside. Yeah, and often I say um, to some of the people who call in with the classic, you know, you can put a bit of um, netting over it or tape it up if you don't want them to go up into the roof. That's so. right, yeah, or, or even just a block of wood or a brick yep. or anything flat that will stay there. Really, yeah, it? yeah, it's just, yep. just a way of blocking that area. Yep. Yeah, that, that, that's... Are there any other questions, Trace? Yeah, there's um, a question... What do we use in our hives for beetles? Um, Sue's asking, the mentor uses a blue dishcloth and a beetle trap. Your hives don't seem to have anything. 
um, probably maybe Sue hasn't realised we've got the tray in here. Yeah, so there is this cool beetle tray down the bottom here. And up above that tray is, it's the bottom of the, the colony, but it's a mesh that the bees can't fit through, but beetles can. And um, you can see there's no beetles in here. There is a beetle larvae though there, you can see that grub. As long as it's outside the hive in this tray, then it's fine. But I usually squash them. Um, and the bees sort of chase the beetles around and they can chase them down into the tray and then we can pull them out and squash them or you can fill this tray with, cook, tray with cooking oil and the beetle get attracted to the smell of the, cook, the vegetable oil and um, sort of get stuck in it. So that's a really quite effective beetle trap. The bees, depending on their genetics, some genetic, there's a genetic trait, sorry Trace, there's a genetic trait in bees that actually chase the beetles around and put them in jail. They make little um, wax jails and they, they herd the beetles. I think North Florida or Florida University called Jamie Ellis, he studied this um, and it, he's got Sometimes when you pop free and so you have beetles running everywhere and that's the jail so it's a good opportunity to also put a sub traps the beetle and, and eventually kills it. Um, the beetle's legs get caught in that fluffy cloth and and they get stuck so there's also um, there's also chemical traps that you can use. Um, there's plenty of ways to try and handle them. But um, in general, it was great. Yeah. yeah. Despite all the wet weather. Yeah, look, we're, we're having a little freezing moment, but there's a couple of questions. Maybe we might just get them in. One was, which I thought was quite a good one from Leanne asking, if, if the super looks really weak, can you just take the super off? Yes, definitely. That's a, a great idea. Um, like I said before, space management is really key with beekeeping. So if, um, if you've got a weak colony down below, they've got a whole second story to police that's empty and things like hive beetle can really take a hold and, and get in there and um, eventually overrun the wheat colony. So yeah, just definitely take your super off and make sure there's no old honey or bees, um, things like wax moth and beetle in it, and then store it inside, um, preferably in a sealed container if you can, but um, just inside out of the weather and out of, um, blocked off from, from pests, um, like behind a screen door or, or whatever. Great, and maybe last question while we're maybe just sort of hanging in here with <laughs> Wi-Fi. Um, um, so in, in this one you've got all flow frames in your super. In the classic hives you've got either three frames or four flow frames, depending on the size you get, and a couple of what look like brood frames, wooden frames. And they are to, for the bees to make honeycomb. So if you really want to harvest honeycomb for yourself and your family then the classic's great because once the bees draw those um, wooden frames out with their wax and fill them with honey you can then pull them out and um, cut all that wax out and you've got beautiful fresh honeycomb um, to enjoy. If um, people are having trouble getting the bees to take to the super could they put a brood frame in the super as long as they've checked the queen? This the uh, like this um, you can't do that unfortunately because the back of the frames form the window and if you just put a brood frame in there, got, it. got a big space. Really help and it's a really great question. You can put, um, put brood up there as long as the queen's not on it as you say and as long as there's no drones on it because the drones can't get back through the excluder sure. to get out and sure. do their flights. Yeah. And that will encourage all the bees to be up in the second story. Mm. I might look, I'm going to squeeze in one more question, Pete. <laughs> then I think we've gone through them all. Is it okay, DJ's asking, is it okay to harvest honeycomb after a swarm? Mm, that's a really tricky question. It's hard to answer one way or the other because it depends on so much. Um, depends whether you're 
swarmed hive has a new queen that's laying again. Depends on the population, is it quite low or is it recovering or is it getting high? Um, it's, it depends whether there's nectar coming in to be able to replenish what you're about to take. Um, so you sort of need to pay attention to all those factors before you do something like that. Um, what you're doing is reducing the colony's stores. So if you've got a weaker colony, you may not want to reduce their stores. Um, so it's, yeah, sorry, it's hard to, hard to answer one way or the other, yeah. but there's a lot to kind of take into account when you're thinking about doing that. Um, you can experiment and just see what happens too. I mean, I like to do that and then you kind of know. So you may want to just do, do it that way. Um, yeah. Nice. All right. Thanks so much, Ariel. Yeah, thank you. Did an amazing job. Lots of learning. Yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> and um, thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, my name is Pete. This is Ariel. And Cedar's away this week. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>